The question I have chosen for my research essay is what, is what are the technical, methodical and aesthetic considerations when creating highly stylized non-bipedal animation? A good example of this would be the movement of a cat or a fox, the head leading the spine and the tail following. To understand the methods and techniques used today when animating non-human characters, we need to go back to the golden age of 2D animation. The techniques developed by Disney still lay the foundation for how we understand and animate non-bipedal, specifically quadruped creatures. 2D animation was exclusively stepped animation, drawing out and colouring each character frame by frame. Because of this, they had massive control over what their characters did and how they performed. Key to this, and still prevalent today, is the use of Edward Mowbridge's animal locomotion. Edward Mowbridge developed a series of photographs of multiple animals in motion. He proved his own theory that at one point while running, a horse lifts all four hooves off of the ground. Seeking a means to share this work, he invented what's known as the zoopraxiscope a method of projecting animated versions of his photographs as short moving sequences. Using, the, using these pictures as well as a myriad of others, animators can ascertain how to move their characters as close to its natural movement as possible. Once you have a near realistic movement, you can alter it to fit the aesthetic style, emphasizing certain movements while minimizing others. With two sets of legs working, there is a lot of weight transference going from where the weight is coming from, where it is, and where it is going. This movement of weight across four legs is where you can get a lot of the character and style in the animation. This style of animating is still very much the basis of 3D animation today. Before we begin animating though, there are a number of aesthetic considerations that need to be addressed that will affect how you animate. First and foremost, what animal it is, or is based off of. Unlike, anim unlike humans, who generally have the same or very similar movements, animals can be vastly different at first glance. There is a surprising similarity, however, in how quadrupeds move, or more accurately, their footfall pattern, backed up by Edward Mybridge's photographs. Though the footfall patterns may be very similar, the body and weight movement will vastly differ. A cat does not move like a dog, for example. Its body follows a gentle arc, head to body to tail, and it has a much more flexible spine, allowing a wider range of movement than that of a dog's. Once we know our animal, we need to choose the gait. Is it running, walking, taking a leisurely trot? The choice made here will determine what reference images videos we need and how the body moves and weight is transferred. Finally, we need to decide on how stylized we'd like this animation to be, whether it be very natural and realistic, or whether in our case we want to exaggerate or minimize certain movements or features. The first consideration when beginning to animate a stylized sinuous character would be whether to animate using the IK or FK. Many animators suggest the use of IK as the animation of quadrupeds. This allows you to emphasize the weight and movement of the body independent of the feet and legs. If animating with the FK, I find that you would have a hard, too hard of a time getting the weight of the animal correct which is where a lot of the character will stem from, while well, animating through the IK allows you to plant the animal's feet where you want them and move the body and shift the weight as is needed. There are two methods I have found for animating creatures, the classic stepped animation and motion capture, a more modern technology. Stepped animation in regards to 3D animation is the modern equivalent to the classical frame-by-frame -frame animation used by companies such as Disney. Using references such as the MyBridge photo sets, we can block out the main poses, but unlike classical 2D animation, we do not need to go through it frame-by-frame. -frame. Once the animation is almost complete, you can use motion trails to clean it up. By creating a motion trail, you can see any small inconsistencies in the movement of your character, and from there make any changes that are required. This is especially pertinent when animating a sinuous stylized character, making sure that the body follows the head, the tail follows the body. The use of motion trails, I feel, can greatly assist animating stylized motion. The second option would be the choice to use motion capture. Use more and more for human characters as, as the technology improves and becomes easier to use. By taking real-world footage, we can track an animal's movement with programs such as Nuke and apply that motion to a CG character. It's a very useful tool for animating large numbers as well as getting the most realistic movement possible, though this technique is not without problems. Motion capture is relatively unsuitable for more stylistic animations, as unlike humans, animals do not always act as a director would wish them. In certain cases, treadmills can be used, but this can produce uncorrect characteristic motion. This technique is also unsuitable when working with wild animals for obvious reasons. As the technology advances, new techniques and methods of animation are developed. One method that is pertinent to our question uses procedural algorithms with a custom user interface. The interface can then be used by the animator to quickly generate a base motion for the animal. And once that has been achieved, can then, the animator can then grab any of the custom manipulators and modify the animation as per need and requirement, greatly reducing the time consumed from creating the animation from scratch. Further improvements were needed to fit the skeleton and animation system to various other quadruped characters such as lion, cats, dogs. Changes would have to be made to the base mathematical equation to generate the different animal walking styles so it is still in production. 
Animals have always been a large part of animation, right back to the beginning, and will continue to do so for a long time. So knowing how to animate and what to look for is very important.